gosh, are you worried that what's happened with you might actually put off other wives taking in Ukrainian refugees? Because if they think, oh, my goodness, some glamorous young Ukrainian is going to come in and steal my husband, they might not think it's worth the risk. Uh, I was worried about this because uh, on the uh, one article, Lona's article, it was mentioned that I don't recommend you to take refuge anymore to your house mm. or sin before you're doing this. It's, a, it's wrong, you know. Uh, after you see everything what is going on in my country, you can say something like this. Serious? Yeah. Uh, it, it's horrible. I don't think that it should affect somebody um, because it's stupid. It's really stupid. It happens with me and Tony. It, and I, I'm sure that it's one per million situation. It cannot be happens every day with everybody. No. Wow, what a huge uproar and scandal caused by one particular Ukrainian refugee when she was accused in the British media of stealing a British lad from his British lass. Uh, so, Witam z Warszawy. Greetings from Warsaw in Poland. And it is now February 2023 and there are still lots and lots of Ukrainian refugees here in Poland's capital and elsewhere in the European Union and further afield in the West. So in today's video, I'm going to react to a question that's been posed many times in the comments below my videos for last year. Where are the Ukrainian single ladies today? And whether it's worth pursuing them and things that you definitely need to be aware of. So let's get into the video. Poyekale. Sar experience. So where have Ukrainians gone to with the Russo-Ukrainian war? Well, right behind me is Warsaw's main train station. A lot of people would have come to this train station back in February, March 2022 in particular. And actually there's still over 1 million Ukrainians who've left since the war. Uh, here in uh, Poland, also in Germany, you have about the same number. You have hundreds of thousands that are also spread out in, well, millions spread out, but in each country, hundreds of thousands, like in the UK, in France, in Italy, in Spain. Also, in my home country, Ireland, when I was back there, there's a big Ukrainian diaspora now. I think it's coming on probably close to 100,000 when I'm making this video. So, definitely, they are spread out in uh, Europe also. Quite a few have gone to the US. I think it's also around 100K when I'm making this video. Canada is taking in a lot. A smaller number have gone further afield to countries like Japan, Australia, New Zealand. And Ukrainians in general, um, because most of them are women and children who have left, because Ukrainian men are, find it hard to leave the country. They need special permission to do so. Uh, they are not in, I would say, a desperate situation in terms of their rights because you have the EU's Temporary Protection Directive. I actually made a video about you know, the, the legal situation for Ukrainians uh, to move and live in the West at the moment. I'll link it up in the card down below in the description. And basically, they, their passport at the moment, the Ukrainian passport is probably stronger than my passports, uh, simply because they can move easier than before. There are special programs, the EU, EU's uh, Temporary Protection Directive. I think at the moment it allows them to stay for up to two years in effect and will probably be extended and it gives them pretty close to the same rights as an EU citizen. Uh, also, it's been the easiest time to move as a Ukrainian to other countries like Canada, the US. There are special programs, Australia, the UK, uh, New Zealand as well. They have been given special dispensation. So there are a lot of them spread out in all the countries of the West, but in particular, there's a lot in Germany and a lot in here in Poland. And also I should say up in the Baltics per capita there are also a lot of Ukrainians. I was up in Riga in Latvia pretty recently and uh, yeah there was also a significant uh, Ukrainian diaspora that has built up uh, since the war, the invasion on the fe February 24th, 2022. <laughs> Честно говоря, сейчас эта граница различия стирается, потому что приехало очень много украинцев сюда. И честно говоря, сказать, что я здесь очень далеко от Украины и нет здесь вот этой вот нашего менталитета, я такое не могу сказать, потому что тут в основном ты идешь по улице, и здесь все наши. Тут либо очень много ребят из Украины, либо очень много ребят из Беларуси. И все равно 
сохраняется вот это вот ощущение домашности. How many of them will stay once the war in Ukraine is over and it is safer to return? That is unclear at the moment. It's anyone's guess. It depends on uh, the situation when this war uh, comes to a conclusion. Uh, if it is a Ukrainian victory, as I anticipate, then I think a large number of that diaspora will return. Uh, but obviously, the longer that this, this hot phase of the war continues, then, you know, it's natural that people start to put down new roots, maybe get a job, meet, meet a partner, which is basically what this video is, is about, and uh, maybe get married and have kids, then it's going to be obviously uh, harder for them to justify going back to Ukraine if they've already put roots down in the countries that they've moved to. But I would expect that the majority will probably return to Ukraine when this is sorted out. So where are you going to meet the single Ukrainian girls in the West specifically? And are they even interested in dating men who are Western now that they find themselves uh, further to the West, whether it's in Europe, Asia, or in the Americas. You're gonna meet single Ukrainian women pretty much in the same places where you're gonna meet Polish single women, Irish single women, American single women. They're gonna go out and socialize, they're gonna be in bars, pubs, clubs. Uh, they're gonna to go to a cafe during the day, probably. They're gonna be at social events, they're gonna be in the gym. They are going to be on dating apps if they're single, most likely. Tinder being, of course, uh, the most famous one. So. Basically, they're going to be in the same places that you're going to meet the local girls. Uh, Ukrainian-specific events might be something like an Okyanelzi concert, most famous band from Ukraine, if they happen to come and play, or a National Day celebration, or some cultural event maybe organized by the uh, embassy. Or there may be even Ukrainian businesses that have opened and are going to attract a Ukrainian clientele. So you need to do a little bit of research in situ. Are they interested in meeting a Western guy? Well, if they were open to meeting a Western guy before, then presumably they still are now that they're here. But be aware that opposed to when they were in Ukraine, their sexual marketplace value, so basically their value on the dating market, having come from Ukraine uh, to say here in Poland, it's probably out of 10, about a plus one for them. And if they go to the West, further to the West, then it's probably a plus two. So what I mean like by that, if she was a six, the scale that guys like to use ranking the attractiveness of women. If she were a six in uh, Ukraine, she's probably an eight in the UK. And as a result, she is going to have a lot more options. I have a, some other videos about this topic. I'll just link them up in the card down below in the description. You want to dive a little bit deeper into it. So basically, if she were interested in meeting Mr. Men, she now ha is surrounded by Western men and her value on the dating market just because in general, Ukrainian women are better looking than women further to the West. Not all of them, but in general, they have so many more value on the dating market. They have so many options compared to before. So this is why I made a video about the death the death knell for the Ukrainian bride business because that was predicated on getting to move to the West overwhelmingly and they're already here. So <laughs> that's the end of that idea. I'll link that video up again above on the card down below in the description. So I think for the women from Ukraine who are maybe speak already English, have traveled a lot, have already been maybe dating a guy from the West when they were back in Ukraine or Maybe they've already had an experience here. Um, it will be pretty hard uh, for a guy who was not competitive in getting a girl before to think that now that she's in the West, that's going to be easier. It's probably going to be a lot harder. However, when I get into some of the culture clashes that I think a certain genre of Ukrainian girl does struggle with. So that would be a girl who maybe wasn't particularly interested in dating a Western guy before, but now she finds herself here, she's single, and she is going to find some of the cultural differences quite annoying and vexing. So let's take a couple of them that, you know, I've heard Ukrainian women or just Eastern European women in general, I think, complain about once they move to West. They used to live in Germany and it has a large uh, Eastern European diaspora. And so many of them complain about the fact that most guys in Germany or say the Netherlands and places like that in the West, they want to go Dutch. 
right? They want to split the bell in the restaurants. So the girls that have the princess values, they want to be treated like milady to a certain extent, right? So they want all the more old-fashioned courtship, flowers, been brought on expensive dates, the man proving himself and courting her uh, thus. And it's very easy if those particular women are manipulative to end up a simp. I have other videos about that. You don't want to end up a simp. Basically, you're going to be basically fawning for the girl's attention, doing everything she says, she's not going to be attracted to you. That's another topic. Uh, but for sure, going Dutch with a Ukrainian girl that is not uh, open to that and wants to have the Ukrainian dating rules, and that's going to be a really tough one. Uh, other things that uh, Ukrainian women uh, tend to do, the ones that are more, I'll say, more conservative, uh, they like to talk about family, having a family and kids very early on. Uh, so maybe even on a first date, which is not the norm, I think, in the West. And they also tend not to be as into the hookup culture or one night stands as is in the norm in the West. I would say they're a little less promiscuous. And uh, that can frustrate, I think, a lot of Western guys from what I've seen who've tried to date just Eastern European women in general in the West is that basically they end up going to maybe on three or four dates. There's no intimacy. The girl is already talking about kids and a family and the guy is paying the bill, but basically going to expensive restaurants that maybe he's not really able to afford. And at the end of it, you know, typical British lad, especially in his 20 is gonna be like, uh, three dates, no intimacy, uh, big, big bills. And the girl's already talking about having kids. Get me out of here, right? That's going to be the reaction, I think, for a lot of Western guys if they don't know what they're doing. So I think for with girls like that, they would probably themselves be better off um, going out with Eastern European guys who are here or a Western guy that understands Slavic mentality intelligence, as I call it, the princess values, and uh, is open to having that kind of uh, more Ukrainian-style relationship than a Western one. As a final little reaction. I'm going to look at a video by another YouTuber, Swedish YouTuber, with a Ukrainian girl who is living there and some of the cultural classes that she has noticed living in Sweden. I think this is going to be a good demonstration of some of the cultural issues that can face Ukrainian girls. You better understand their situation. How often would you say you would get approached in, in person in Ukraine? Like, I'd say that there is someone like making a compliment or just like saying something or like, you know, like looking or just yeah, yeah doing something every day. The guys are quite uh, initiated. They're there. more taking so that's, initiative. That's maybe, yeah, the thing that they are willing and wanting and like they are taught to do the first move. So yeah. it's like if you do not do the first move, move like the girl will not know that you actually like her. Yeah. Like you want to find out more about her. So that's the first thing. Maybe this is a bit Scandinavian specific, but in Ukraine, you gotta be the real man. And you are the one making the first move on the girl, not the other way around. It's extremely rare for Ukrainian girls to make a move on a guy. You gotta be Nastoyashi Muzik, as they say. And uh, yeah, Sweden, I know that I think just in the West in general, guys are a lot more nervous about making the first move. But in Ukraine, that is not an issue. It's actually expected. So yeah, this is interesting to hear. I'll link this video down below if you want to watch all of it as well. I went out on a date with a Swedish guy. It was very special because he made an effort to prepare before meeting me. And he was very, very cute by like telling me that he actually like read uh, on, on Google and he found like some videos on YouTube, for example, like how it is to date a Ukrainian girl or how do you appro approach Doing research. <laughs> yes, he did a research. <laughs> I wonder if you watch my channel. He brought me home and then he was like, okay, please don't, don't move, don't do anything. Just give me a minute. I was like, okay. And then he goes around the car and he opens the door in front of me and I don't remember if he actually like, what do you say, like... Um, Open the door? No, but you put the hand, like you... Yeah, I don't know. the hand. Okay. You don't do that, so I say, <laughs> you don't know how to say it. Yeah. Offered his hand. <laughs> the American guy here looks uh, a bit shocked by all this chivalry because that's 
what Ukrainian girls are more used to in their own culture. A man in, when they come to the restaurant on a date is gonna take their coat, hang it up, uh, and then probably help them with their chair. Also in the car, open the door uh, for the girls. So this kind of stuff, well, forewarned is forearmed. So he definitely did his research, watch videos on YouTube. Yeah, okay, offered uh, his, his hand. I don't remember if he did that, but he opened the door and he was like, I read it on the internet that you do that in Ukraine. Like, guys do that. And I was like, yeah, sure, like they do. But it was so cute, like in his interpretation, because yeah. he's, he was like, I've never done it in my life before, but I am willing to do it for you. That so, is pretty cute. So he was cute and my point was that you know, by learning and by being open to other cultures, we can create something beautiful and new together and there mm. could be something really special coming out. <laughs> so yeah, that's the killer combo to mix, I think the playfulness of Western culture with a little bit more of the chivalry of the East and, you know, being, as I said, a real man, as they say in the East of Europe, so I'm not saying that you have to be 100% a Ukrainian guy, uh, but definitely the uh, Nastayashi Mujik part is very important. But as I said, if you can combine that with a little bit more playfulness than the typical Ukrainian guy has, I think in my opinion, then you have definitely gonna, a killer combo that is gonna impress the Ukrainian ladies in the West. So if you wanna avoid making any of those culture clash faux pas with a Ukrainian girl or perhaps it's going to be a Belarusian girl or a pretty Pole because you will find many of those here in Warsaw in Poland as well. Uh, there's actually a massive Belarusian diaspora here in Poland and in neighboring Lithuania. Then what are you doing next weekend because it could be you living the Tsar experience with me here in situ. I actually had a little bit of a teaser for the Tsar experience here in Warsaw with a client who's gonna come with me to Riga in Latvia. So let's go and live it up large here in the east of Europe. Poland is Central Europe, but the very east of Central Europe, but Eastern Europe in general. Down below is an application form to the Tsar experience. It is by application only. And to give you a little bit of a taster, a better idea what the Tsar experience entails, I'm gonna put up a card to a playlist, should be right up here or up here, with uh, some client testimonials and the cities where we have gone together with clients to live the Zara experience over the last few years. It is uh, the beginning of 2023 and the Russo-Ukrainian war is still in a hot phase. So at the moment, I am not going with clients to Ukraine, Russia, or Belarus. But as I mentioned, I have been here in Warsaw with a client also in Riga, in Latvia, and over the last six months also lived it up in Almaty, in Kazakhstan, and Chisinau, crazy Chisinau in Moldova. So go check out those videos and get a bit of a taste of where we can live the Tsar experience together if it's a good fit for both of us. And yeah, go fill out the application form after you checked out those videos, and it could be you in Eastern Europe living the Tsar experience next weekend. So, with that, on that note, I'll bid you a do zwiedzenia. I'm still working on my Polish. Another language you're gonna to have to add to the collection, and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao. Sar experience.